know that uh, what is my international business, global marketing. Hmm? So the uh, it means that the international management is a process of applying management concepts and techniques in the multinational environment. Clearly, it is saying that the strategies are the techniques are the concepts which we are going to apply or supply in the management in the multinational environment and adapting management practices not only theoretically but practically we have to implement in the different economic in different environment of the countries so that it can be developed that means economically it should be sound food, politically it should be sound food, culturally and and one but should be, should be uh, so every way you should have to create and gain different things not only that international business is not a new phenomenon you people know that however the volumes of the international trade has increased dramatically over the last decade today every nation and an increasing number of companies buy and sell goods in international markets so the world has come so close with the help of the technology that buying and selling or purchasing of the goods or international transactions are taking place in a short span of time everywhere in the every corner of the world. Now we will go for the next thing that is global and regional integration strategies. So what does it mean? So what are the strategies are there for the global and regional international business. So the thing is here, first one is reduce tariffs and trades. Tariffs and trade means these are the things where we are going to have the taxes, international tax. That means we can reduce if two countries are having a good relationship with each other. So what is happening? The trades and tariffs are taking place in a proper way. That means in the n number of countries, the tariffs and trade place itself. For example, if India and Japan, Nepal is there. So if I want to go to Nepal, I don't need a passport where I can go and same charges will be there how it is applicable in other states. But if I want to go to another country like uh, China or Pakistan, what happened? I need a passport. I have to go the business cannot be go easily. I have to pay some taxes and tariffs to it, and it will work for the bond. But if you are having a bond, good bond like Nepal, then the international strategies are taking place or integration strategies, then what is happening? I should not have to pay a tax. So those are things are the tax will be a very low cost or cheap cost. So this is the things we can reduce in the international market or the global strategy. Second thing is quality. Uh, Regional trade agreement. Yes, this is the trade agreement. So what is happening in the international business? It agreement is there between the two countries or two continents or two, more than two, I can say. So partly as a result of the slow progress in multilateral trade negotiations, the United States and many other countries has perceived bilateral and regional trade agreements. Bilateral means dual. And uh, the United States, Canada, Mexico make up the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, NFTA, North America. Free Trade Agreement has been there between three countries, Canada, USA, North America, and Mexico. If I talk, if I'm taking an example of North America, in North America, you'll find these three countries Canada, America, USA, and Mexico. What is happening? There is a free trade between these three countries so that an agreement is there between the regional trade agreement between these three countries where they doesn't have to pay any single trades or tariffs because the barriers are not there. So the agreement, uh, because of this, the business is running in a smooth way and at in the international market. Not only this, if you see the uh, they are going to remove the barriers to trade among these countries and a huge North American market has been created. So the number of economic development has occurred because of this agreement and all are designed to promote common 
in the region. Some of the important rules are the agreement between this NAFTA has been took place means that means I am just saying some few things. The elimination means removing of tariffs as well as import and export quota. That means import and exporting transactions will be go for free of cost. Next, the opening of government procurement markets to companies in the other two nations. Not only in the current country, in other countries also they can. The procurement markets can be open over the air. So the government will give the permission. The permission will be free of cost for those countries. Now, an increase in the opportunity to make investment in each other countries. So in each other countries, the investment can be very easy. The transaction, they should not pay any tax or tariffs to the government. Not only that, an increase, that means development is there in the travel between these countries. Transportation is very simple and easy because of the NAFTA. Not only that, one more important thing is the removal of restrictions on agricultural products, auto parts, and energy goods, etc. So they have removed the uh, agriculture, that means uh, restrictions, whatever the restrictions are there. The agriculture or the energy food part or an energy or auto part has been removed among these three countries. They will do freely and easily with each other. Next, uh, unified currency. Yeah. Next, third one is unified currency. What does it mean? So, the European Union EU has made significant progress over in the past decades in becoming. A unified market in 2003, this group consists of 15 nations like Australia, Austria, not Australia, it's Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Great Britain, Greece, Poland, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Portugal, Spain, and Sweden. In May 2004, 10 additional countries added are joined in the European Union. So, the main purpose of this is there should be a single currency, unified currency, which currency can be run in every country. That means dollars, European dollars, where in everywhere it should can be, should have to run. That means and if I am staying in Spain, if I want to go to Germany, the currency which I am using in Spain can be utilized in Germany also, because of the trade has been becoming such a dollars, European euros, dollars of trade. Yeah. Now, Next one is benefit for developed and huge Asian market. Fourth one is here benefits. What are the benefits are there uh, for in the international market? So, what are those here? Few things I will tell you. Like, if I take an example of Japan, Japan has an experienced economic problem for about 10 years in firm. It continues to be the primary economic force in the Pacific Rim. So, Japan recently has invested relatively more in its uh, own backyard of Asia than in any other part of the world. So Japanese MNCs want to take advantage of the underdeveloped and huge Asian markets. At the same time, China is providing to be a major economic force. Next one is try that means trying to make the transition to market economics. So the central and Asia, that means Europe and the Eastern Europe, Russia and other republics of the former. So, it means currently are still trying to make the transition among economic, that means developing in the economy. Last one, economic activities in Latin America countries will be volatile. So, you people know that despite the continuing political and economical setback in the world, uh, these countries periodically experience economic and export growth continues in Brazil, Chile and Mexico. This is in the South America again. Okay. Uh, between these things, uh, North America and South America is taking place in economic development in Latin America. Additionally, uh, MNCs continually target the geographical area. There is a great deal of cross-border investment between Latin America countries. Okay. Now, if you see here in the international market, what other things are there here? You can Next one is opportunities. See, there is a recent progress among other less than the developed nations. Recently, Indian government policy supporting to the established MNCs. So, they provide service jobs such as programmers and call centers for operations for Indians. 
these are the three market now we'll go for the benefits of the global strategy what is the first one is cost reduction so when i'm talking when a transaction is taking place or the agreement is taking place between two countries automatically the cost will reduce don't charge more than the quality improvement once the agreement has been taken place the same quality of what is been manufactured the same quality will be bring in the other countries in one business if the quality is poor they need to improve that so this is simple way that means focus on a small number of products and programs help importing quality so japan is success in automobiles because of their quality improvement next one is enhanced customer preference involves so here what is happening uh, production for a global market which results in a global availability service availability and reception of a product so this is competitive and enhancing customer preferences like soft drinks fast foods electronics telecommunication computers etc are the major practitioners of this strategy so what is happening is focusing on the customer preference where customers are liking what is the main agenda what is their main preference this thing which product they need so depending on that they are manufacturing those goods and making the agreement between those countries for those products now increase competitive leverage so attacking and counter attacking from the second say from more points strong competitive advantage in other countries a major us medical company used this leverage to prevent japanese expansion so the competition is also there so to bring the big business between other uh, companies or other countries they are doing this now exchange risk management so what is happening exchange of the thing risk management is there in every way so we have to focus on this next thing is uh, there has been much awareness created about exchange of risk management in this last decade so this is due to the change in the system of floating exchange rates as compared to the fixed exchange rates in the 70s so what was the price of fixed in 70s but now the prices has been floating because exchange of rates the dollar rate or the money current country currency rate is floating that is the reason exchange rate management is taking place so not only that although the growing volume of the world has trade has increased in importance of the subject the real concern is caused by the fact that today all the major convertible countries in the world freely float against each other resulting in volatile exchange rate movements now if you see here next one the overall conclusion this means that the world's largest firms are not global but regional based in the terms of breadth and depth of the market coverage so the globalization does reflect special and rather and gives well outcome of going international business and regional strategies are more relevant than global ones so what is happening here means that international and globally it's not big that breadth and the depth of the business is becoming important in the world wide and the globe so i hope students you understand the concept in topic uh, just uh, tomorrow topic will be very Uh, important maybe it is going to come and this topic today's topic will come for the short term or it can ask for long term this is very important please mention your roll numbers in the comment box thank you